Question 4. In this diagram, the rule is double the number in the square and add the number in the triangle to make the number in the circle. So let's just test how it works. So if we double this number in this square, we've got 15 times 2. That's going to give us 30. And then if we add the number in the triangle, 30 add 40 does indeed give us 70. So that's how it works. But what might be interesting to do is to is to actually write some sort of function machine for this or number machine. So if you start with a number in the square and then you double it, then you add the number in the triangle to make the number in the circle. So that's a little number machine that describes what is going on in that sentence. It's always going to be easier to look at symbols and numbers rather than a big sentence of words. So that's mathematical shorthand for describing what is going on in that sentence. Start with the number in the square, double it, add on the number in the triangle to make the number in the circle. So it works. Now let's have a look what we've got to do. It says use the same rule to write in the missing numbers below. So, if I start with the number in the square, which is 35, I times it by 2. That is going to give me 70. And then I add on the number in the triangle. So we've got to do 70 add 15. If you can't do that in your head, quick column method, 70 add 15. 0 add 5 is 5, 7 add 1 is 8. So that first answer has to be 85. However, on the second one, it's not going to be so straightforward because this time we don't know the square. And our rule tells us to start with the number in the square. But if we don't know the square, we, how can we start with the number in the square? However, we do know the number in the circle, which is the one that's at the end of our rule. So what we're going to have to do is start at the end of the rule and work backwards. Now if we start in with 150, to work backwards, we've got to do the opposite of what's on these arrows here. So when we were going this way, we were timesing by 2 and adding on the triangle. But when we go backwards, we're doing the opposite, which means subtracting the triangle. And the opposite of timesing by 2, the opposite of doubling the number is halving the number. That's going to be dividing by 2. So what we've got to do now is work this rule backwards. So when you go forward, you times 2 and add the triangle. When you work in reverse, you subtract the triangle and divide by 2. So you start at the end here with a certain number in the circle, 150. Subtract the triangle, you're going to get 140. And then divide that by 2, you're going to get 70. So it looks as though the number in the square has to be 70. Now what we should do is just double check that it works with the rule going in the correct way from the original question. So 70 times 2, double the number in the square, would be 140. And 140, add on your 10, would indeed be 150. So it is right. The number in the square has got to be 70.